Looking at the faithful art style of this Legend of Korra game, which comes from reputable developer Platinum, I had high hopes that it would make good use of the Avatar The Last Airbender universe and its awesome elemental superpowers. In reality, it's a huge disappointment. This poorly made tie-in can't even stand up as a competent third-person action game, much less something I could recommend to a fan of the show. As you'd expect from a rote video game adaptation, Avatar Korra is immediately robbed of her water, earth, fire, and air bending powers and has to reactivate them one at a time. I'm afraid your bending is blocked, Avatar. You won't be able to fight your way out of this. And as you'd expect, combat against generic, palette-swapped enemies is painfully simplistic and takes place in a series of bland, featureless arenas. It's especially bad in the first few hours of its approximately five-hour campaign. To be fair, combat does get better over time. Once I'd gotten the hang of its annoyingly short counter timing windows and leveled up my bending skills, I was able to pull off some cool attack strings that resemble the beatdowns Korra delivers in the show. It just never really felt that good, and it took until my second playthrough of a game I didn't really want to finish playing the first time for it to become remotely rewarding. Enemy variety isn't terrible, but I almost never felt like I had to vary up my attacks. Perhaps the most offensive part is that there's barely a hint of the wit and charm that makes the show's characters endearing. There's basically no story, much of the acting makes Bolin's performance as Natuk sound good, and barely any characters other than Korra appear at all. Only Jinora is here, and she isn't even animated. In fact, even the cutscenes are poor. It's embarrassing. Looks like someone knew I was coming. All right, let's do this. A close second on the terribleness scale is Iroh's item store. When you die, all of the health potions and buffs you've used have to be repurchased and re-equipped every single time or you can't heal at all. It's a genuinely stupid system. The Legend of Korra the game isn't all combat, though when I played the Endless Runner minigame interjected every few levels, I wished it was. It's actually not a terrible Endless Runner, but it isn't a good one either, and these high speed 90 degree turns are disorienting. The pro bending minigame is better, but not by much. So I have no idea who the Legend of Korra the game is for. It's definitely not for young fans of Korra, as the combat is too unforgiving, the boss battles too tedious, the economy ridiculously punishing, and the story too weak and lacking any of the show's charm. It's not for older people either, because next to its action game contemporaries, Korra looks terrible. I can't recommend it to anyone. For better news on The Legend of Korra, stick with IGN. Let's go! Let's go. 